there is a component of battery that needed to make a contact. There is a receiver that needs to be on, that needs to be connected to a mixer. And all of this cannot actually work on their own until there is a power source. So, the voice cannot even be amplified without the mystery of a microphone. This certain truth or deep mystery were actually revealed to some people and package it together and that becomes their work. So, if you want your voice amplified, you need to save enough money or prepare enough money to go and buy from them that have it. Not everybody that browses on the internet knows what the internet is meant for. Some of us even browse Facebook. They still need to help you to fill your jam form. Because the technicality, the mystery behind it, you don't know it. Until the mystery behind the workings of the spirit actually is communicated in the spirit, you will never be evidential of a mystery here on earth. Look at this. Somebody is angry at you overly dealing. And you begin to pray in the language of the spirit, Kalapariata. And all of a sudden, the person turns to love you. I'm talking a personal experience. I told you a story all of how I wanted to do my final year project and the man that actually wanted to friend one of my friends that I felt I was a hindrance already prepared to fail me. And then when I saw that I was part of the panel, I went to the back of the hall, spoke in tongues for 17 minutes and I came back. And God, God actually orchestrates him how the man was defeated. We will speak in the language of the spirit. You are not speaking to men. You are speaking to who? And the Bible says it is recorded in the spirit that we are speaking mysteries. Now, behind every negative situation in our life is a mystery. There are people who look good, but good things doesn't happen to them. They have a very good heart, but they cannot tell. There are people who are beautiful, hardworking, everything is supposed to be working well for them. But can I tell you something? I've seen people who are actually who has a very good job, who drive a very good car. They are marriageable and yet nobody is saying, how are you? There must be a mystery behind it that has actually defied them from having, from not having that marital peace or marital settlement. When things are working, it's a manifestation that you are communicating the right mysteries. When things are not working, is an indication that you are not communicating the right mysteries. Can I hear amen to that? So, we are not coming to waste our time. These seven days of Pentecost. No, sir. The Lord God of heaven commanded this. That there are certain mysteries around our life that needs to give way. There are certain mysteries around this assembly that needs to give way. Needs to give way. And as long as you are part of this Ark of Covenant, everyone that was part of the Ark of Noah, it became the Ark of Safety for them. Everyone that genuinely plugged in into this, this would be a season where you will rise beyond imagination. It's not a system to flatter you. God cannot deny himself. Psalm 89 and verse 34. Does anybody have a Bible? The Bible recorded there, he said, my covenant will not break. No halter the things that has gone out of my lips. Anytime we finish praying here, we'll read some certain scriptures. And I'll tell you, this is what the Lord said is doing. This is what the Lord said is doing. This is what the Lord said he will do. Why? He will go to God on the basis of his word. He said, my covenant will I not break. Nor alter the things that has gone out of my lips. God cannot deny himself. Neither will God deny his word. 
In Psalm 138, if you study verse 2 and 3, he said God has exalted his word. Above, he has exalted his word above his name. The word of the Lord is highly exalted that God cannot deny himself. It shall be our season of exceeding fruitfulness. That nations will proceed and come out of our loins. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 17 and verse 6. Everyone open your Bible. Genesis 17 and verse 6. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are not there, say wait for me. Alright, everyone, Genesis 17 and verse 6. We are going to read in concert. All of us will read together in concert. And believe this. One of the things we are praying in tongues for is what I want to show you now. If you are there, say amen. You are all there now. Let's read together. One, two, read. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of you. King shall come from is that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that a good one? I will make you ex You see, there is a realm where you are fruitful. If somebody give back to one, it's fruitful. Is that not so? Somebody who gave back to eight at once, that's exceedingly fruitfulness. And there's some Elizabeth that will give back to eight at once. That is exceeding. But this is the word of the Lord. The Lord said, I have the capacity to make you fruitful. So the mystery we are communicating to God in this season is the mystery of what? Fruitfulness. That the Lord will make every destiny in this assembly exceedingly fruitful. That the Lord karamati yadekebiba elekonti mikaati yaka eriski That the Lord will make every family here exceedingly fruitful. Amen. That the Lord will make this assembly exceedingly fruitful. Amen. In all department of your life, you will not be barren. Amen. In your finances, there shall be no barrenness. Amen. In over your job, there shall be no barrenness. Amen. The Lord will make you exceedingly fruitful in this season in the name of Jesus. If your shop is not selling before, begin to sell at high power rates. Yeah. Exceedingly fruitful. Hi, hi, God speaking. I will make you. If God says we will make you, God cannot lie. My covenant will not break, nor alter the things that has gone out of my lips. If God say it, he will do it. It's just for him to say it. Arise, shine, for the light has come. Arise, shine, for your word has come. When your word comes, you are lighted and you will rise and shine. The covenant of God will not be broken. His words will not return. His words will not return to him void. He will not. I will make you exceedingly. How many of you believe the word of the Lord? It is it's not a actually to make you. It's not actually to make you feel good. If you don't believe, it's your destiny. It doesn't change anything. But I believe this thing hundred percent. I know how my back was, but I know what it is now. If God said he would do it. 
And over this assembly, the Lord said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings shall come. Isaiah 16 verse 22. Isaiah 60. This is the mystery we are communicating to God. We are not just coming to waste time. You see, this is the reason why we need to be encouraged praying in tongues. Especially in these seven days of Pentecost. Don't be told. No one can pray for you like you. Your destiny will change at the frequency of your prayers. Especially when God commands a prayer. Everything God commands is for the rising of man. But not everybody rises by it. You know why? Not everybody understands what the Lord is doing. Many of us might see this time as time to show. You can show. I can pray in tongues more than this one. I'm better. Oh, no. 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 It's not the time to show. And if you have not baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, ask the Lord to encounter you. Right there, you begin to speak. If your faith is in line. God is willingly ready to reach out to his people. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely we ask God, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. And right there your tongue will change. So we are coming to God on the basis of his word. Which cannot be broken. Neither will God ever deny it. My covenant will I not break. No hotter the things that has gone out of my lips. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Nations shall come out of you. This is what God is saying. Isaiah 16 verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. Hide the Lord will hasten it this time. Now, now. Now, now. Now, now. A little church turn around faith shall become a thousand. A small one among us shall become a strong nation. I, the Lord. I, the Lord, will perform it. In his time, when is your time? Your time is when you believe. Time does not change anything. I make an illustration last Sunday. If you fail Waek eight years ago, and you are waiting, your Waek certificate will be changed with time. How many F9 do you have? F9 parallel. You now kept it at the inside your locker. He you said, "I'll be counting. One year it will change. Three years, it will, no." Time does not change anything. The day you believe is your own time. When you have understanding of what it takes to pass work, that's when you collect form. You will now and you pass. Do not say you pass. Time does not change anything. As a matter of fact, time is against you. Because whether you like it or not, they will be counting. How many of you want? Time is against every woman being. And that's why time should be properly invested. How many of you is willing to have a company and you employ a 70-year-old man? Let me see. That. Time is already against such a person. Time works against you daily when it's not properly invested. If you cannot give account of what you do with your time on a daily basis, you should not even prosper. I, the Lord, will esteem it in the time you believe it. That's what the, that's what he's saying there. I, the Lord, will esteem it 
to perform. If the day you believe is the day your time come. Every every day is everybody's day. The day you believe your own is the day to you. Uh, today is 30. How many of us were paid salary maybe today or two days ago? Alright, thank you. I'm seeing your hand now. Alright. Did anybody announce anything that you were paid? Does he even look at your face? Huh? But did they appoint you? Were you not paid? Is everybody's day. The day you believe becomes your own, your own day. So we have believed as a church. This is what we believe. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. Hide the Lord we esteem it now. Hide the Lord we esteem it. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. Is somebody blessed tonight? He said, then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the first of them that make merry and I will multiply them. They shall not be few, I will glorify them, they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as before. And their congregation shall be established before me. I will punish all who will oppress them. Their nobles shall be from among them and their governors shall come from their midst. Then I will cause them to draw near. And they shall approach me. For who is, who is this? Who pledge his heart to approach me? Says the Lord. You shall be my people. And I will be your God. What's God saying here? So come to give God thanks. What will God do? I will multiply. So it's our season of what? And when God multiplied, we will not be few. He said, I will also glorify them. They will not be small. When God actually glorify us, smallness will never be identified with us. Can I say a loud amen to that? Amen. And when God do this, what, what will be next? Verse 20. Their children also shall be as before. And their congregation shall be established before me. Turn around, faith assembly shall be established before Christ. Yeah. And what will God now begin to do? Anyone who now dare to oppress any member of this assembly or this church, what will happen? God said, I will punish them. Yeah. After divine vengeance, what follows? Look at verse 21. Compare this verse 21 to Genesis 17 and verse 6. Compare it. If you have been following, compare it. Now watch this. He said, there are nobles shall be among them. After that, the Lord multiplied, the Lord glorified, the Lord punished those who want to oppress. One thing will follow. Nobles will not begin to... Now, who has another translation of the Bible? Let's look for another translation that's from the noble. Who has another translation? Let me amplify. Now, say that again, please. Their leader. No, let's let me under translation. I want another word for that noble. Who has NIV? The message Bible is called NIV. NIT, NIV. Right, read. No, no, no. Read verse 21. No, no, that's uh, NIV. Now I want to amplify. Thank you. 
rulers will arise from among them. When God multiply, God glorify. And we are established before the Christ. What will God say will happen? He said leaders will not begin to see the empty space in life is the place of leadership. What is the what is the calamity before Nigeria? Leadership. The most vacant place in the entire world is a place of leadership. Many people like one there at ten and they just eat and die. No. No, life is more than that. When God multiply, God glorify. He establish his covenant and then will stand before the almighty God. God will now begin to turn ordinary men into leaders. Ordinary men into leaders. Ordinary men into ordinary men into leaders. Now, if you move forward, you move forward from there, he said, and their governor shall come from their midst. Now, New King James give us specific word there. He said, governors. Now, uh, who read the, uh, the uh, ruler? Can you help me and read? Continue from there. Their ruler shall be from among them. Yes. No, no. Uh, uh, who was under translation? You have jumped. You have jumped something. Their leaders will be from among them. Who was under translation? N uh, NLT. What's NLT? Yes. What's the message Bible? Ah. I can't wait to show you. What's the message Bible? Okay. NIV. Amplify. Amplify. Jeremiah 30 and verse 21, right? And the prince will be one of them. And their ruler shall come from the midst of them. I will cause him to draw near and he will, he will approach me. The Lord is going to be establishing a covenant of relationship with us when all this happens. I'm reading from Amplify. For which is he who will have the boldness and will dare on his own initiative to approach me, says the Lord. We are approaching God on our own initiative. That they might come to glorify and they might come to multiply. I love this. I love amplify. He said their princes will be will be one of them. And their ruler will come from the midst of them. I will cause him to draw near and he will approach me. For who is he who will have the boldness and will dare on his own initiative to what? To approach me, says the Lord. And when we do this, he said, then you will be my people. And I will be your God. I love this. Old. So this we are doing in this season is the season of actually submitting ourselves to God that he might multiply and glorify us. And when he does that, he establish a sonship relationship with us as a church. And he said, now I am your God. You are all my people. Let me tell you the meaning of that. One day I went to pray. And as I was praying, I was preparing for Sunday service. So, those days I used to trek. So, I, I left Dusel around 11 in the night. And I was trekking to day day. I was strolling. I remember I was trekking to day day. And I was praying. I was praying. If you trek like that for some hours, your leg will be hot. So my leg was very hot that night. I removed the slippers I was. 
I was wearing, I remember I was wearing a green trouser. I remember that night. So when I got to the day, I turned back. It, it takes three hours to trek from Duse to the day. So when I got to the day, I trekked back. I was coming back. I got back exactly around 6 a.m. My eyes were heavy. My leg was heavy. And I just prayed for six hours. And I was praying in tongues. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And, uh, oh, glory. Oh, glory. Ah, ah, gahata here. See, katanda. The Lord Jesus is here. Ah, kaleyete kosi yata. I see the glory of the Lord. Oh, glory. The Lord said something to me, and I think it's not your business. So, now let me tell you the meaning of that verse. He said, you'll be my people. And I'll be your God. Let me tell you the meaning of that. And as I returned, I said, oh God. I prayed six hours. He didn't tell me anything. If I get to church, what will I tell them? It's Sunday morning. And I'd like to come to Sunday service with an assurance that I have the backing of God to come to church. Someone had to come and tell them, oh, the Lord said he's doing this. How many of you have noticed that when I come to church, I'll tell you, this is what God said he's doing. And I'm not lying about it. I'm not lying about it. God told me this is what I'm going to do and I will just come and say this is what God said he's doing. That's what I will. So I was in the midst of that. I said oh God tell me what I will tell them. I've prayed for six hours. And what the Lord said? He said I love you. Oh. That thing got me angry. I said to when did God turn to Romeo and Juliet? Writing me a love letter. He said I love you. So I wanted to bind the devil. I said, get the behind me, Satan. And the Lord told me, he said, the Lord told me, he said, it is I. I love you. The thing did not, the thing did not go well with me. So, I went to the house, I showered. And most times, those, those times, most times, those days, I will, I will delay like two, three minutes to enter service. Because I don't want anybody to touch me, I don't want anybody to greet me. I just want to come and just preach and leave. My eyes will be a little bit red and I'll be very tired. I remember those services used to have those days where they used to break plenty of years. Oh, I wish Larry is here. Larry used to be my cameraman that time. He used to record with the Samsung phone. He just removed suit and throw everybody be on the floor. When they were breaking chairs, stop removing the suit. Three, three thousand. <laughs> oh, glory. Sorry, don't mind me. So when I was dressing up, those those days when I used to wear white white suit with my white shoe, uh, I was about wearing the white uh, socks. I wore the suit and everything was white. And the Lord told me, He said, "If I tell you I love you, you know the meaning. Nothing is impossible to a lover." How many of you agree with me? He said, nothing is impossible to who? If you profess your love, say Friday, say I love you. It means the salary can even follow. Are we, are we still together? Are we still together? Praise the we say hallelujah. Thank you. Glory. If you say I love you, Meaning, you don't, if I love my wife, my wife, you don't need to ask me things eh? before I give. There are few things we need in the house. Shadrach will understand what I'm saying. It's when my wife gets home that she will understand. I have to go to the market and be buying pepper. They even greet me when I I was not asking Chedra. I said, why is people embarrassing me like this? Why people are greeting me? He said, why I look like a big man? Why people are greeting me so embarrassing? I was carrying pepper. Where you put little rodo, tatashi, and the... <laughs> Love can make you act stupid. You will leave office, you go to market, your wife will be sleeping. Your wife will just reach home, you will just see this pepper. <laughs> she doesn't even have gone to market this afternoon. I've gone to go and buy everything. She didn't know. I'm just saying it. 
when you love, everything that is in your capacity becomes easy to release. And when God told me that, he gave me one simple scripture. John 3.16. He said, for God so loved the world and he gave his precious only begotten. When God loves you, he can release anything to you. And he told me, he said, I can do anything through you. Ah! When I understand that thing, I did not enter service where. I enter service proud. Uh, the way I entered that day, I cannot remember what happened. Nobody could stand in church that day. A kolabia, fila. It was not normal Sunday service. When God becomes your God and you become His people, you enter into a dimension of impossibility. But you know why? One day I, rem I reminded God of what He told me. He said, Things are happening to you to the level you believe. So that means if you even love God, things will not happen above the level to which you believe. Now, if you believe 1,000, God won't take you to 1 billion. You know why? 1 billion will kill you. How many of you agree with me? When God becomes your God, and you become, become His people, you enter into a realm of love that nothing becomes what? So this church is entering into a realm of undeniable possibility that the entire world will want to celebrate. And every member of this church who plug in into this prophetic season, I tell you something, your life will become amazing. Amazing wonder that nothing in your life will be difficult anymore. When I was sharing that story, God told me something. Let me say it. Would you permit me to say it? I visited somebody today and was narrating a story of one young man who finished uh, after I finished, graduated from school and in the church where he was attending because maybe his suit was fine. So they made him assistant pastor. Now the Lord spoke to me about it now. So when they make him assistant pastor, one day they sent him. You see, Larry has said so. I've tested Larry with that thing before. That somebody will have one day they can say, Come pray. Larry will say, Excuse me, sir. No. <laughs> Maybe Larry knows that story. <laughs> so the young man carried his suit and he went there and he saw the demon. In the name of Jesus, get out. The, the demon will lay the man's lap with his fine suit. After he did that, according to the story, they had to fly that man. To India, he was there for six months. He became paralyzed. You see, that you are praying five minutes in tongues and you are sweating. You think you are anointed yet? We have power to cast out demons. This is not to say. But there is an intercourse that needs to happen before you do some things. Believe me. And this is why we should not be proud. You, you pray now, you are shaking your hand and you are sweating. You think you are anointed. We will send you to one demon. This is why we should come to God in brokenness. In what? What you know does not even exist. It's no more than God. Let me see your hand. I have never in my life prayed one day with the heart that I am a pastor. No. How many of us were here yesterday? Was I praying like a pastor? No. 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 How many of us was here on Monday? Was I praying like a pastor? No. 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 All of us are all of us are creating space before God. You have your own potter. And I'm and I'm managing mine. But to come to God and say, eh, I'm now David. Ah, you, you will fall like a fool. When you come to God, come boldly. With the in-depth understanding of what Christ made available, that should make you broken. You know, the Lord spoke to me. While I was talking about the six hours and experience, you know, I've gone to pray for people that have terrible issues. Terrible. And God, God always comes. There is a particular woman that maybe the testimony they've written it 
it will be rolled out on Monday. I met the woman, I can't remember. She just called me on Sunday when I was driving to church in the evening. And this particular person used to have an hospital before. The hospital crashed, relocated to Canada, was trying to fix life. Well, I was trying to fix life there. The husband of 18 years just ran, ran out one day. And the husband started do, do, doing some few things against and it was a terrible thing. And I just prayed one some simple prayer. E K C. After we prayed, according to her, she slept off right there. Right there. Now she had a, she had the revelation of a woman coming out from the chair where she was sitting. And she bind the woman, tied the woman with rope of fuel and burned the woman. And she woke up. There's one of his son who operates in the prophetic. That the heaven has been closed. Not a dream. Not even to see anymore. She called me today. He said the young man came up with this dream. Came up with this. And everything in that house became restored. But I saw something. Which I told them. That there is actually an altar somewhere. This and this. You see you need to be. You need to actually interact with God. To begin to. Before you start dealing with. That fights people. You must have interact with God. In as some Cause will have gone before you begin to demystify if you don't want a demon to slap you. There's no member of this church who has called me to anywhere before that I said, If I didn't go, it's because I choose not to. How many of you have refined any case to me and I said, You can go? No, no, Jesus does not refine case. This is the season where we are. Somebody say, I'm a member. I don't need to be serious with this prayer. Don't worry. On today, they ask you to come and pray for your neighbor. I pray you know the tongue will slap. I've seen where God helped me to do ordinary opening prayer. And it became a crusade. Yeah. Let's close. Please, let's take this season seriously. Can I say amen to that? As we pray, tomorrow we will be here again by 6 p.m. And we are going to be praying in tongues for two hours. It's because of today's Wednesday service that we stop in one hour so that I will, I will charge us on what we are doing. This is the third day. But tomorrow there's no... Uh, on Monday there was no talk. How many of you were here? No talk. On Tuesday there was no talk. No. Uh. Tomorrow there's no, there's no dialogue. Are we together? Tomorrow we are here. And please don't come late. Engage in this. See, settle the issues around your life once and for all. 